Hello, everybody. I'm going to talk about Matt Frazier today. Um, Matt Frazier, who um, I've seen live and I have many of his uh, videos, they're here on my channel. I get emails from him. Well, you know, I subscribe to his, his newsletter. And one of the things I got, which I found completely hilarious, and I get these probably several times a week, different kinds of mess emails from him, was this one I got on Black Friday. So let me show you um, the setup of this that he sent, you know, out. Now, this is what it looked like to start off with. Just taking a look at this place, you know, this pristine place with this perfect smile. <laughs> interesting jacket actually i think i kind of like that jacket and the you know looks fine anyway so the email i got from him was quite quite interesting let's let's see what you guys think of this um as i say i get a lot of different messages from him this one is um here let's look at it and you tell me what you kind of think of this so arrived i think on thursday before or well, the day before thanks the day before thanksgiving probably so that wednesday in celebration of black friday i'm thrilled to announce an exclusive off opportunity just for you join any of my online readings in january and you could be the lucky recipient of a one-on-one -on -one private reading with me it's simple sign up attend and immerse yourself in the experience of connect with spirit the experience of connect with spirit okay at the conclusion of each online group reading one participant will be gifted this special privilege please note this unique offer is valid only for the listed online readings below don't miss this chance to enhance your journey with a private reading space is limited click to below to reserve your spot it just was like really you're putting out a black friday deal you are communicating with the dead right <laughs> you hear them they talk to you and you have to, you have to put out Black Friday deals, begging for people to come and get readings with you so that they can hopefully win a free one-on-one -on -one private reading with you. I mean, how vulnerable are you? How, how, how bad are sales, Matt? Come on now. Come on now. Just something really, really makes you think, right? Okay. So I went over just to check and i went and um looked up some of the things that are going on in his uh you know some of his events <clears throat> and i saw that there are oops several that are going on he's got things in january february march april so on and he has where is it i went to his event page and I was clicking on the links. And the one that's coming up, it looks like soonest is January 6th. That's a that's a Saturday. It's in the villages in Florida. And it is tickets start at $45. All sales vinyl must be at least 18 years older, older, which is at least better than Thomas John, who reads five-year-olds. Um and $45 a ticket. Okay, so I went and looked at the venue. Now, this is just one example. It's one of the most recent ones coming up. I went and looked at the the place they're having this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful stadium. Not stadium, but auditorium. And it fits just over a 1,000 people. So I thought, wow, if he could pack that, which would be really interesting if he could pack a 1,000 people in there. Kind of find that hard to believe. But, you know uh possible a thousand people at 45 dollars a person that's forty five thousand dollars. and now i've been to his show and he does not need many people to run that show he travels like with his wife maybe not now that he has a small child but um his or his mom who was his manager i don't know if she still is or not um when he was in my area i the last saw him he had a a local person who was like a, I don't know if I would call her a manager, but like a local person that he didn't fly in, but just helped manage his, his um, event there. And then, the, you know, there's somebody to take a ticket. 
uh, the same, I think the same person helped line everybody up and did and helped with the book sales and things. So, um, you know, you could hire a few local people if you wanted to, to help get people seated and make sure that people didn't record or something like that. But really you could do this with Matt and maybe two more people. So if one of them is your mom, one of them is your, your wife, that kind of, you don't really have to pay them necessarily. The thing is, um, you're paying for their flights and their hotel. Well, your wife, you don't have to pay for an extra room, but it's very low cost. So you're renting the building. I doubt they have to get any kind of insurance. The building probably has that kind of insurance for the day. Um, he doesn't need private security. He just needs to have the books shipped in and he sells a lot of books. There's a long line where he autographs the books afterwards. He's selling them for what, $20 a piece. And there might be some other swag, you know, like hand sanitizer and masks and, and prayer cards or something like that. So he's probably making, um, if there was an event that has maybe 200, 300 people, which is more like what I've seen, um, Maybe maybe a quarter of those people are going to buy something. So that's still a lot of money there. But $45,000 is, you, you got to pay the venue. Like I said, that's a lot. And you got the flights and your hotel room. It's still a huge profit. Really, really lucrative doing this. But, you know, having to beg people for private readings on Black Friday, really? Ooh, kind of tacky. So... Um, let's see what else is here. He says he's America's top psychic medium. That's what his website says. Top psychic medium. Uh, no. Uh, how do you, how do you... <laughs> Oh, dear Matt. How, how is that determined? Uh, <laughs> is there a survey? <laughs> New York Times bestselling author. Really? Okay star of the hit television series on E! Entertainment. Well, he was the star hit television series. Lasted one season exactly. It's been several years, so it doesn't look like it's being picked up again. E! Entertainment. You know, you're a psychic medium and you're on an entertainment channel. It's kind of sad right there, you know. During his live, and live is always capitalized, all four letters. I don't know why. During his live audience readings, Matt gets up close and personal, taking guests on a spiritual journey by reconnecting them with their loved ones and spirit and validating proof of the afterlife in real time. Now, Matt is a terrific cold reader. He is really personal. He's glib. He's quick. He looks, dresses nice, looks good. He has a great smile. And he's... um a physical, uh, he's a toucher. So, I mean, he asks, usually asks permission to touch somebody, but he gets people all emotionally, pulls them up and asks them, you know, to stand up. And then he'll say, can I touch you? Your loved one wants me to hug you, or he wants me to um, hold your hand, or uh, your your grandmother wants me to, you know, um, give you give you a hug and, you know, those kinds of things. And people, as soon as that happens, man, the the flood waters just pour in. It's 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 hard to watch from somebody like me watching it, knowing exactly what's going on. But it is an interesting thing to see. It's like he gets them to an apex in the emotional, um, what's going in with the emotions. And then right when he feels like he he's right there, it's like they used to do, Mark used to tell us, Mark Edward would tell people, he'd say that the psychic will pull out the Kleenex at just the right opportune and hand it to you. It doesn't have to say anything. And as soon as you see that box of Kleenex coming out, the, the person who's on the edge just loses it right there. I guess it's kind of like when somebody says, you know, you're trying to hold it in, you're having a really bad day and everything, you know, you, you, you're trying not to cry. And somebody comes up to you and say, and says, are you okay? And then that's <laughs> when you lose it. So it's that motion, emo, um, emotion. So Matt Frazier's got that figured out really good. He's very good at cold reading. Um, I have, he's like I said, he's fast. He's He's got, um, he's done, you know, probably tens of thousands, if not more readings. So 
comes out naturally feeling um, is fast. He's like I say, he's got a lot of humor. He does a lot of, oh my gods. And oh, shut up. He does a lot of that kind of stuff that is funny for a few minutes. And then it's kind of, you're kind of over it. Okay, so what else does it say? He has audiences on the edge of their seats with his outrageous personality and unique approach. Well, I guess they're on the edge of their seats. If you're a motivated um, sitter who really, 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 really wants to get your reading and is, has put aside time to get over to the event, uh, waited for however long that takes, paid your money, got the book, you know, you're all there ready and you're excited and you've told your friends and family you're going to be doing this and there's a lot of expectation that they hope that you're going to get a reading and you're hoping of who you're going to get in touch with. So yeah, I guess they could be on the seat of their pants. Um, and he does have an outrageous personality and he does have a unique approach. It is, it is interesting. We've talked about it quite a few times. His readings lead guests through a roller coaster of emotions from laughing to crying. That's true. He does, he does seem to have the ebbs and flows really well. He, he gets it up to an emotional point, gets him crying, and then almost immediately he starts him laughing. Um, he turns skeptics into believers with stunning details. Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by the word skeptic. Because if you're really a skeptic and all it takes is for this guy to do some cold reading to you in, in an emotional time, then, you know, how how skeptical were you? So they use the word skeptic very, very generously, right? His dynamic readings frequently include names, dates, and locations you couldn't possibly know. Uh, well, I've seen him do some hot readings. At least one I have up on my channel where he hot read a uh, reporter that he was on a show and had her, I think, within... Under 30 seconds, he had her crying and he was spot on. And then we went, of course, to her. I think it was her Instagram page and we found everything that he was saying. And it was obvious that he hot read her. But um, details, names, dates, locations that he couldn't possibly know. No, I don't think so. He does you know, like throw out a name like John or Mary or, you know, those kinds of things. M names. Um so cold reading Barnum statements is mainly what he does. It looks very smooth. Don't get me wrong. It's glib and, and quick. So the sitter, especially if they're motivated, you know, they really want to be there. They really want their reading and they're willing to suspend their judgment a little bit, suspend their critical thinking to be able to um, accept the reading for what it is. Okay. Only adding to his long-established reputation as one of the most credible evidential mediums working today. Long-established reputation. Um, I do have a video. I Maybe I should put that up. A video of him doing readings on the street back in the very beginning of his career, probably in... I'm not really sure, but it was probably in the 2006, 2008 time. I'll have to go back and look. And is that long? Uh, established reputation? Again, you're playing with the words there, dude. One of the most credible, according to who, not his critics. And that's kind of where you got to look evidential mediums i love that phrase evidential mediums they think it's evidential mediums because they say they're giving evidence and their idea of evidence is that the person who they're reading for says um they accept it so they say um yes i do have a john in my family and yeah we did have a dog that died and um absolutely my mother is dead so they they validate it you know so they say that's evidence um admission to the event does not guarantee a reading yeah that's always there so um fascinating that he's matt frazier is doing so badly that he's just doing these entertainment shows um he keeps coming out with these pictures of himself more and more bizarre with the like 
angels and stars and 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 you know that kind of thing and i guess this, that's his thing he says uh let's see i'm looking at a different one new jersey stage which is another article about him it says psychic media matt fraser brings new material to bergen pack published in november 28th 2023 i don't see a reporter mm. oh this is just a copy of his website i mean what i just read off his website are the first three paragraphs pretty much of what he said um in this new jersey stage Mm. yeah it says his readings lead guests through a roller coaster of emotions from laughing to crying turning skeptics into believers with stunning details his dynamic readings frequently include names dates and location so they just copied his website and put it out on something that looks like a like an actual news article he says that it says here from a-list celebrities and influencers to people all over the world looking to get in touch with those who have lost a-list probably a little more like b list and c list tyler henry does the same people who badly want to have uh, be back in the limelight their agents probably the ones who line these the shows up you know people who we haven't heard from in a long time uh but like being in the limelight okay he's he's the author of the best-selling author of we never die really how many people out there have bought that book? My gosh, I probably have 12 copies. Of it. No, I'm kidding. I don't have any copies of it. A sought after guest on popular TV shows such as The Real Housewives. Okay. Blotched. Never seen that. The Kelly Clarkson Show. Wow. Popular. Very popular. So, um, then it talks about the article talks about the performing arts center he's going to be in new jersey the bergen performing arts center it's a cultural mecca it's housed in an art deco style building and it talks about the building in new jersey and that's pretty much it so they copied his website and then it looks like they copied the wikipedia page for the theater maybe doesn't even have an author i mean a reporter mm -mm super interesting so it looks like tom um good old matt here uh, that's january 25th he'll be in new jersey and january 6th he'll be at um in florida um, i would think that this guy makes is pretty well traveled as far as his um probably has a lot of frequent flyer miles probably can go anywhere he wants and do pretty much anything he wants okay i'm looking at the online group events hey january 6th he's in florida the villages and then on the 7th he's in jacksonville florida it looks like he has the eighth off the ninth he's in melbourne florida the 10th he's in tampa the 11th of january is west palm beach florida and then he has a gap of time and then he's in massachusetts the next day new jersey the next day new jersey and then he's going to do online classes so this guy seems pretty organized he's all over kentucky new york nevada ontario um new hampshire you know if you're if every gig you do you make like thirty thousand dollars and the venue is probably going to cost you 10 maybe maybe a little bit more so if you're making ten thousand dollars or more in profit uh in a day of two three hours good gig um i personally wouldn't want to do anything like that but you know you got to think about it this is big money and again if he was so hot and he was so awesome and, and he was really communicating with with dead people um he wouldn't be begging for for uh views it wouldn't be begging for readings on on uh on uh, black friday he certainly wouldn't be giving away free readings in the hopes that somebody will sign up for a reading in one of the other events and he wouldn't be on stage at various 
auditoriums of a thousand people, no, <laughs> he would be, he would be in dire need in places that need crime solved, mysteries, people found. Um, he would be working for the military. He'd be working for all all those other very important gigs. Well, they probably wouldn't be working for the military. They'd probably have him in a bunker somewhere. But anyway, um, interesting that he's gotten so desperate. And he certainly wouldn't have had a TV show that was on the E! Entertainment Network canceled canceled after the first uh, season. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Like and share. Thanks.